my friend <laughs> it's Pat Sloan here and I wanted to show you I got in a new color of my t-shirt may the fourth inch be with you and I want to show you this because oh also hey you know it's still too chilly to wear just a t-shirt <laughs> I need an aqua one of these don't I I don't have I have purple and gold that's <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, I wanted you to see them again just in case you didn't get them the first time or just seeing mine uh, we put these out a couple years ago and they are amazing all designed all of my merchandise is designed by my good friend my bestie Kate Spain who is an incredible graphics designer and so she did also we have um, the the tumblers you know the and we have the bags May the fourth inch be with you because you know May four, May fourth, <laughs> that is coming up soon. So you have time to order this. But let me show you the other things. The tote bag. I love how she did that um, vision. Like it's kind of like spacey, right? Of the fourth inch be with you underneath the uh, some of the items where we had the space, like the tote bag. So cool. <laughs> So she is so clever uh, and I want you to just know, I just want you to know about them because there's just so much fun. <laughs> now I did get two borders on the top and the bottom. There we go. Up, 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 top and bottom. And so we're going to do the sides today. But before I um, take that down in measurement, uh, I've got the next block from Make-A-Wish. This is Make-A-Wish Friday. It's the first Friday of every month. And this is a charity quilt along for um, Make-A-Wish with the Fat Quarter Shop. So I'll get that out. But before that, I want to uh, remind you that the Virginia Quilt Museum has the call for entries open for Harrisonburg. So if you have not uh, entered your quilt yet, you know, the call for entries, the museum is only so big, so there are categories and uh, only so many can be accepted, but we're going to try to have a nice variety, a variety of sizes, a variety of styles, and so we hope that you are going to enter um, and see if you are selected. There's no guarantee, can't, you know, we can't take everybody that enters, uh, but it'll be so amazing to have a full exhibit in the museum uh, it's just so cool right I just love it the museum is also part of an event that is happening right now called the great community give it is for uh, organizations charity organizations uh, and it's where you can go out and donate to be part of this uh, event for the year great community give and they do a couple of fun things uh, one is called let me just get this right one is called the coffee chat the yeah yeah the coffee chat power hour the power hour which is on april 17th and during the power hour hour <laughs> if the whoever um raises the most money uh will that's between 9 and a.m on wednesday april 17th whoever raises the most money the great community give organization gives that organization an additional 500 dollars, which is super cool and if you are located near the museum they are and you can go that morning they are having a little um, patio a uh, front porch thing where they're going to have biscuits and coffee and things like that that would be so much fun i i won't be able to be down there that's uh but it would if i lived closer i would be there that would be so cool but this is going on between now and um yeah whatever april 17th so you can uh you can donate now the link is in the description box below the funds go to different things that happen in the museum where you know like exhibits or whatever they're raising for uh, and you can read about it at their website i got two quilts back from the um, spa from my quilter karen and so let me show you the first one which are the horses and this is for my great niece and so i need to get the binding on this one there we go here we go there's the horses and so many of you sent fabrics for me to use in this it's just so so awesome i think it needs a red binding what do you think red binding for sure uh, on the back, our ambassador Yvonne sent me this Kentucky Derby fabric and my long armor loved it, Yvonne. She just loved that. So super cool. Uh, there, you can see, I want to show you. We decided on like a mountain, like, you know, like a spiky 
kind of mountain quilting and she used a tan thread. So that turned out really nice. This now has to be like the next thing I bind so that I can uh, ship it. It'll be a surprise because it's not for any particular reason. Um, Amelia, who is my great niece, was is born in February, so I'm not going to wait till February. It'd just be a surprise. Okay, the other one is an older um, Orifil quilt designer block of the month, and so I for ten years, every year for ten years, I hosted a Orifil designer block of the month where there were twelve designers, and I interviewed them, and I, I designed the theme. I ran the whole project, but the theme um, often was something interesting that everybody could relate to but could take a twist on it and make it their own thing. So the theme for this one was, where did I have that? Uh, I think the, th oh I thought I printed it. I think the theme was um, an important place, important places to you, like a location. Um, so they, they, they came out with such great, great ideas. And I will have it all linked in the description box where you can get the patterns. They're still for free at the Orifil website. Uh, and then each pattern you can link and see the designer's story about their block. And so here is the quilt. I, the, the designer blocks all came in. I designed the setting, I set the designer blocks, and then that went to Orifil for their private collection of quilts. Um, this is my version. So as I was hosting the quilt along, I also made the quilt. And so let me just hold the bottom up a bit. Um, so there's this incredible bridge was designed by Yvonne Fouche. And so it is so, so cool. And then you've got the big apple down by Sharon Holland, the big apple down there. Yeah. This <laughs> and let's see, another one was Sherry Safoti is, um, there's the Central Park and hers is really fun to read because they were, she was married in Central Park. And so that's what that block is. So they're all just really cool. And the quilt design that, um, Karen found I love it's called spaghetti and meatballs <laughs> and I think you can see it it's straight lines with circles like you know spaghetti and meatballs so pretty fun so I have those two that just came back and I will um, work whew, I will work on getting binding on those all right so let's I'm going to take this down and want to uh the, well anyway so let me just get that we'll do that next <laughs> so here let me just show you where's the top do i got the top all right so i have got you can see the top so i've got that border on the top and the bottom and now what I, i'm going to do is just measure the sides so i can put the side borders on and here is how they look and so i went with sewing both of these strips together so i just had one border strip to sew on because it really didn't make any sense with it being scrappy to alternate the corners that added like zero value and this is much easier i only have to handle the big center of the quilt the four borders i don't have to handle it a second time which would have been eight times i'm all about that <laughs> i'm all about let's just handle the handle the bulk as few times as possible and so here we go so i'm going to go measure it and put them on and we'll see how it looks so check check before you do your borders that you are still like I am going from the top down for both sides going from the top down because that just you know I have to have a plan and also what I did was mark the top there so like I have a kitty a kitty pin see it's, see it's a kitty so cute kitties and unicorns those are the ones I work with uh, so that is the top because I laid it out um, in a particular way you know like it doesn't really matter at this point i'm not matching it up against another piece it mattered when the two of them were being matched together but i've got the top and i've got the basket right side up at the top so they go like this so now i can go ahead and pin and i generally will pin uh part of the way in from here i'll just i'll just talk for a second uh, part of the way in from the side i'm just going to use that kitty pin to start so I'll take from this side, which I'm starting at, so I don't get, you know, I don't want to mess up and rotate it or do anything like that. Um, but I'll do a bunch of pins across. And then 
I will go and match up the bottom at the, at the bottom, so the other end of this, before I do the middle. Because if for some reason it is kind of wacky, like, like something got out of whack, like one, I didn't measure it right or something, that is going to show up now versus when I've pinned the whole thing. You know, you just help yourself a bit. This is long. <laughs> this is the whole length of the quilt. It's a nice size lap quilt. Okay, so what I do is I pin down here now. Now I'm at the bottom. And I'll do several of these. I'll go in a bit. And then I can then I can see where I am. So, okay, so while I'm pinning this for a second, on a side note, uh, I... I did not do any cross stitch since I showed you I caught up. Did I show you I caught up? Well, I did catch up. I caught up to the temperature. So Sunday I will do temperature. But I haven't gone through the cross stitch and looked at things. Basically, I just still kind of feel like I'm catching up for some reason. I just feel like I'm behind. And, you know, sometimes that's, that's the way it is. One, one of our sweet friends left me a note the one time and said, you know, you don't have to do as many things. We'll still come and watch. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Will you? Will you? <laughs> tell me. Tell me, tell me, tell me. But yeah, I, I need to reduce a few things down. But I still want to cross stitch. That's, that, I want to have that kind of as my quiet, I call it my zen, my zen time. Quiet time, listen to some music. Maybe I'd watch a video I've been meaning to watch. Something like that. Um, and I do want to go through now and look at those. I don't know if I'll do it on today's video, but I want to do it in the next few days. I don't know. Maybe I will do today's video. We'll see. We will see. But actually, I wanted to show you. There. We got. We got. Just in that amount of time. I always want to show you lots of stuff. And everything takes time, doesn't it? It's like our brains want to do all the things but we aren't we don't work that fast i like working fast but you know you can't do all the things pat you can't okay so this is pinned i will do the other side and then ouch <laughs> oh i just i just poked myself i just poked myself okay <laughs> real life real life i was trying to find the clicker so let me sew both sides on and i'll show you it Real quick, when I'm starting, I do have a little starter set up here because that's I'm making churn dash blocks as part of that. But when I'm out on these borders that are final borders, I will back stitch. So I'll go forward a bit and then I'll come and do a back stitch. I don't know. I just feel like it secures it that outer layer really nicely, and and I'll put the rest of the border on. All four borders on. Oh, I love it. I love it. I'm really glad I used that black and white gingham. I think that just gave it that little extra something and then doing the double border. So here's what it looks like as I sewed the two strips together to make a border unit. So you can see what that looks like. There is one spot where there was a tiny little piece, like a little sliver piece. So let me show you. And I don't, you know, like it doesn't bother me. I think these things are like super cute to find these little extra pieces like that in there. And this one actually blends pretty well, like into that next fabric. So it's really, I couldn't even find it. I had to search hard to find it to show you. I saw it when I was sewing. Um, yeah, so that I think that's really cool. I was getting ready to say, oh, I'll go out and show you. Here's my orchid. <laughs> little little interruption for the beautiful orchid. I was going to show you the mercantile quilt out on the clothesline, but this is what it's doing. So let's take a look at it on the wall instead. There it is. I will have to take a picture outside, but looks good. Looks good. Okay, we are going to look at the Make-A-Wish. Make-A-Wish, you can see it back there. Our first block for Make-A-Wish was the birds, the beautiful, blue, beautiful birds. This is called Moonbeam, and the proceeds for the Make-A-Wish project uh, all go to the Make-A-Wish of Texas in the area where the Fat Quarter Shop is. And the Fat Quarter Shop donates 
funds. Uh, they give a donation to this whole project. Moda Fabrics gives a, a donation to this whole project. And then all of our donations go in. Plus, the quilts are auctioned. Other things are being auctioned all during the year. Uh, we did a cross-stitch auction a while back last month. So that was super cool. So this month, we have the four... Um, I would say you know, they look like 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 leaves, you know, like the bird is holding. You can see there. Whoops, if I move this. Do you see how the bird is kind of holding a branch? That's like, like a branch. It's like a piece of with an olive branch kind of a thing. That's, that's the effect I see when I look at it. Uh, I'm using uh, all of the blues are from drawing room all the blue fabrics are from drawing room my fabric line and then they're set on this gray blossom that's from christopher thomas my friend and then some fig tree red and then um the the white is also from drawing room and so now i can actually actually sew these if i wanted so there you go so I will have a picture of this on my website today and I should probably put one on the project page with a straight on photo. So let me actually just let me get the other camera. Look how spectacular they are. Um, the red is going to be pop through for me. There won't be any big red areas, just smaller pop through areas, but they are big blocks and it is just coming together so gorgeous, just really, really gorgeous. The Fat Quarter Shop is sewing all of the Make-A-Wish blocks, so you can go watch Kimberly Jolly's videos over at the Fat Quarter Shop YouTube channel. So there, if you want to, you know, go through and know how it's sewn, uh, they are really wonderful uh, construction for the blocks. Um, some of them are tad more work. These two weren't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> also, I want to thank Bobby, our ambassador, for helping me with uh, this sew along. Thank you, Bobby. Uh, I forgot. I forgot to tell you on the mercantile, there's actually a wide back in the mercantile line, the fabric line for mercantile, uh, which is what the a lot of those fabrics are, that are, well, most of the fabrics except for the um, gingham. But here is the wide back. Look how sweet this is. So, you know, you don't have to have it just for that project for Mercantile. If you're not making Mercantile, you're just looking for a really beautiful pink floral wide back. Look at that. And then, you know, of course, I'm not opening it all up, but it's a, it's big. It's a big wide back. Ah, oh, so nice. Fat Quarter Shop sent me, sent me this one to use. I'm going to enjoy that on the back of there. Okay. There's two other quilt alongs coming up this month later, and I want to be sure that you are in on them. I'm just going to pop up pictures. The first one is, this is Heart of America. The pattern is free, and so you can just purchase the, I mean, you can just download the pattern. It's free pattern, and if you want to use your own fabrics, that's fine. There are no kits, but there had been, so I know some of you bought the kit, and if you haven't sewn it yet, you want to, you can join me. We're going to start on the 18th for Heart of America, and I'm not going to promise like every week because I might get a little behind. We might skip a week. I'm just saying that ahead for, um, <laughs> just because some of them have um, a lot of things to do each week. And so I might, you know, we might just have a week where we have a break and then we catch up. It might just be real life, what we all have to do, including moi, including moi. But Heart of America, I give you on the project page uh, two different fabric options. Let me show you the darker one. I'm using this one that you're seeing. And this fabric line, I think is called Vintage. Uh, here's a, a mock-up of it done in that. And so it's a little bit more traditional colors, a little bit darker, red, white, and blues. And so it's gorgeous as well. Both of the fabric lines are available, so you can just buy the yardage if you love that or you want to add it to what you already own. Okay, the other is we're going to sew with my Paradise Park, and we're going to do the box lanterns. And the box lanterns is just an awesome quilt. It has two different types of blocks and then it creates that chain effect and i call it the there's the the box 
block. Uh, it looks like a box, the one that makes kind of the chain, and then it alternates with that beautiful star. Uh, there are kits, so you can do it with My Paradise Park and use the kit, and the kit comes with the pattern. The side, uh, size of this is 49 by 67. The pattern also gives you a size for a twin quilt. So if you are, you have to adjust yardage. If you buy the kit, but you want to make a twin, you'll have to adjust your yardage to get uh, a bit more to make the, a little bit bigger quilt for a twin size. Uh, but the pattern is in the kit, or you can just buy the pattern. And the pattern is called, I didn't write here, but I think the pattern is called Evergreen. The Fat Quarter Shop, when we use a pattern for a kit, they give the, the you have the pattern name, which is Evergreen, but when they do a kit in another fabric line, they call it a new name. So it's Box Lanterns with my Paradise Park. So I'm, I'm super excited. I'm super excited about that one. Having fun sewing with um, Paradise Park when I sewed for the Block a Day, uh, our March Toffee Bars. That was super fun. So it's going to be great um, to, do, to do the Box Lanterns. Uh, and the, again, we're going to go, we're not going to be a crazy pace. Uh, you know, I'm trying to pace things a little bit um, less nutty. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. And if we have to take a break again, you know, if some for some reason, see spring is coming. Spring and everybody needs, has things that they want to do. I have things I want to do. I have things other than quilting that I want to do. <laughs> so I might have to make a little space in life to fit stuff in. And then we'll just, we'll adjust. We will adjust. And that I have starting on the 26th, the week after. And they're on different days. I didn't write the day down. Okay, I forgot. It is Dandelion Day. Like, do we celebrate dandelions? I don't know. Do you have a quilt with dandelions on it? Maybe a dandelion fabric? It's also Peeps Day, like the little peeps. Oh, yes. <laughs> There's lots of peep patterns out there. So if you made a peep quilt, share that too. So I hope that you will be sewing along with Make-A-Wish and supporting that wonderful organization that grants wishes for children, ill children. It is so good. And Kimberly and Kevin Jolly have been amazing um, with their charity for this. And so have all of you, because you have been sewing along for years and supporting, supporting helping children. You know, what could be better, right? It just is the best. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff I shared here today. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the description box or the comments here at YouTube. And I, I look forward to hearing from you. I do read them. I read them. I do. Mwah. So I love you. Thank you. I'm sending kisses, lots of kisses. I love you. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I'll see you online. Mm -hmm.